Hi, this is it. Hi, this is Joe again with another review. For saying this video, we're going to be discussing the 2019 film X Men Dark Phoenix. Now, of course, James McAvoy, he has a Jennifer Lawrence, and there's only two people that I know that saw in this movie. <coughs> I mean, off hand. Of course, this movie is part of the more recent X Men movie series, and at least the rebooted version. But it's back in the early 2000s, he did have the X-Men movies, uh, three of them were Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart uh, and Anne Paquin in, th in those films, it was like in the early 2000s. Now it says uh, they have the Marvel Comics uh, Universe now, Marvel Studios, they rebooted the whole X-Men movie series. So X-Men First Class, you had X-Men Apocalypse, you had... Uh, uh, I think it was another X Men movie in there somewhere, and, and you have this one, the, the X Men Dark Phoenix, which we're also going to be talking about in a minute. Uh, but you also had other X Men films. You had X X Men Origins Wolverine, you had X Men um, you had Logan, and, and you also had another movie just with Wolverine and called just the Wolverine. Um, so 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 you have about maybe like. Like eight or nine different X Men movies. Uh, uh, yeah, the other one, uh, X Men: Days of Future's Past. That was, that was the other one I, I, I uh, skipped over. So, so you must have had one, maybe nine or ten film, ten, ten or eleven X Men films. So it was one of the longest film film series. So of the Marvel comic book universe. Uh, except for maybe Batman. X Men had just as many movie, more more movies I think that that Batman had. Uh, anyway, in, in the X-Men Dark Phoenix, is one of the more infamous storylines that's in the X-Men uh, comic book uh, franchise. And it was also mentioned, they also had a Dark Phoenix uh, series in the animated cartoon series, which took place back in the 90s. So you had the X-Men animated series, and this is one of the most better storylines. I think it was like a three or four part series. Uh, originally, I think it aired like during during the week or every week uh, for for about a month in prime time during the summer. So it was a real, really big big deal. Oh, you want to know what happened next? And then they repeated the series on uh, Saturday mornings, the Dog Phoenix uh, Saga. Uh, I know this is going to be long. I know this is a long intro, but it's basically almost the same. Uh, you know. Almost the same plot, almost uh, a slight, slight variation for the cartoon series, but but it's, but but it's very very similar to that. Uh, what what basically what happens is and this happens within, within the first five minutes of the film, where the X Men get asked by NASA to go into outer space to help this to help the space shuttle crew to you know you know the help the helicopter got hit by a comet or something. And the X Men are the only ones capable of getting up there really fast and helping the space shuttle crew. Uh, before before going any further, I should mention there was a, a prologue in this film about where Jean Grey as a little girl with her mental abilities, and she apparently you know accidentally killed her parents because later on we found out we find out otherwise in the film, which we want to get into. So. She got uh, you know adopted by Charles Xavier, played by James McElroy, and he, and she lives and gets trained and gets taught at Charles Xavier's uh, school for you know for mutants. And then of course then you go into this the storyline which we're just getting into with the X Men being asked by NASA to go into space to help the space shuttle. So so the so they go into space. They help out the crew, and then meanwhile, uh, the X Men they actually go, they went out. Well, of course, you had Beast, you had Jean Grey, you had Mystique or Raven, played by Jennifer Lawrence, and you had uh, Jean Grey goes goes out. You also had Cyclops, and you had Nightcrawler. Th those are the ones who physically went out uh, to help the space shuttle crew. And so when they were helping them out, this 
strange wave, a strange karma come, comes in with this, uh, with this very unusual uh, readings on the, on this uh, karma. Here's the spatial. Well, Jean Grey was was in there to hold up the ship with her mental powers as Nightcrawler or could you know Nightcrawler gets the crew or transports the crew out from the space shuttle into the X jet X wing jet and of course which which of course what Nightcrawler eventually does and and well Jean Grey is still there and in the last second she gets hit by this comment and it has its unusual powers. Meanwhile, these other group of aliens, and there and there were aliens, with the leader by, by uh, Jessica Jessica uh, Chastain from Zero Dark Thirty, who should have won the Oscar for Zero Dark Thirty, which is kind of ironic that Jennifer, that Jessica Jessica Chastain is in this movie with Jennifer Lawrence. You know, as she plays Ra uh, Raven or Mystique. Because Jennifer Lawrence beat Jessica Chastain for the Oscar for Best Picture, so it's kind of funny they had these two actresses in the same movie. And she realized, and Jessica Chastain realizes that she she's actually the villain in this movie. Je Jessica Chastain's character is actually the villain in this film, and she, and she figures out that that Jean, because he's a mutant, she could probably better control this entity. In her in her mind, but if we can control the sanity, we can have all the we can control the world. And so, Jessica Chastain was trying try, her character was trying to manipulate Jean Grey, and she go and the, pretty much the rest of the movie, she's Jean Grey just attacking, getting so upset, and this end this entity known as the Phoenix, or they or they dubbed it the Phoenix, because the X Men thought that she was dead, and she like rose from the ashes, and you know, you know like the Phoenix. And every time she gets emotional, she lashes out at anybody that's around her. And she, and she, and she kills Raven. Actually, she ki she kills her. And she and she goes after the cops, she goes after the military, she goes after Magneto at one point. Because she does go to Magneto for help. And she, and he refused to help her because if he does, you know, he, he was afraid that the X-Men were going to go after him again. And that meanwhile, that's pretty much what he does. And then he go, and then he goes after, uh, or should I say, Mystique, uh, uh, Mystique, Magneto, and Beast go after these aliens. And the X Men trying to figure out what they're trying to stop Magneto and Beast for what for what they're doing. And then the X Men realizes, hey, these a these aliens are trying to control Gene, trying to use whatever's in Gene to to, to destroy. Uh, Take over, take over the planet. So I know it's a real, real convol one, one convoluted uh, story, and they do stop these aliens. And they do destroy. They end up killing off Jessica Justine's character, and they stop the aliens in the end of the film. But in doing so, Jean, though the Phoenix that was in Jean, burns out, and you see the Phoenix. <laughs> logo that was made famous in the comic books and in the cartoon series in the sky and it's pretty much how this particular film ends. The problem with that I have with, with, with X-Men Dark Phoenix is that it has so much action in it that if you don't if you don't see the first fi uh, 15 or 20 minutes of the film you really look you, you really get lost but because it's all action through the whole movie and it's, you know, they they should focus they should focus more on how to try to stop her, and and they and they do get go into that in this movie, but not enough to my to my satisfaction, because me I'm kind of old school. Uh, for those of you who watch my other videos with talking about the superhero films, at least the more recent films, I like my movie superhero movies have a plot and have a very, have maybe one or two small battles, and they have the main battle towards the latter third of the movie. That's how I like it. But but if you start with battle, maybe a little teeny tiny plot to explain what's going on, explain what was going to happen with the rest of the movie, and then you have three quarters, the, the rest of the three quarters of the movie, all action. It's like, you just see things getting blown up, 
or things get thrown around. Uh, and that's what you, that's what you see in this movie plus other uh, superhero films that, that have, have been coming out the last ten or fifteen years. Uh, ever since Sam Raimi got kicked off for doing Spider Man films, that's what you've been seeing in the Spider Man movies. Uh, or, 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 or superhero movies as a whole, not just the Marvel uh, comic book movies, but also the DC comic films as well. You see, I mean, they, they're just as good as that as the Marvel, you know, universe uh, series is. But I'm not saying it's not a bad movie. I thought it was a, because it's a plot that I that I was aware of, like I said earlier, because of the cartoon series. So, so I am familiar with the Dark Phoenix stuff, but I didn't really go really into the Phoenix character that much. I mean, it didn't really do that much for the for the mythology of the of the Dark Phoenix character. It did more in the cartoon series that, that, because they could build on that. And then like a three or four part series with the Dark Phoenix uh, saga. So, so they did a better job in, in the cartoon series than they did in this movie in terms of exploring the Dark Phoenix character. But but in terms of the movie itself, I, it's not a bad movie, but I could have done better with, with the plot and that's so focused on more on the action. Because that's what, that's what the modern comic book movie audience wants, wants to see the action, 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 and not to have everything explained to them. Because they don't like everything explained to them. Me, I'm just the opposite. I like to see it. The, you know, the plot develop and eventually the, the big battle scene eventually develops in, in these movies. Like you had in the original Superman films with Christopher Reeve, at least the first two, they built up to the big action scene towards the end of the film. That's what I like to see and go back to that style of filmmaking in comic book movies. That's why that's why I like to see him go back to or even doing this the uh Sam Raimi, Tom McGuire, Spider Man films. I like to see him build up to the big action scenes. Uh, which, they, which they did very well in the, which Sam Raimi did very, very well when he directed the first three Spider Man films. To build up to that. Uh, and then have action, 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 maybe maybe one or two comedic moments and then action, 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 action. Uh because it gets tiresome after a while. So so but uh, Dark, the X Men Dark Phoenix is definitely I, I feel is one of the better movies in the X Men series. Uh, I mean, I think so. I, I know I've seen Apocalypse before. I, I don't think I, I don't think review that one. I have to reacquaint re myself with that movie before I do a review on that. But but in terms of the actual film, I think it's one of the better films because it takes a plot from the uh, one of the better known plots. From from the from the X Men series into this film, so that's my review of the movie X Men Dark Phoenix. Please click on the video, please rate it, please subscribe to my channel, please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. And you can check out all my reviews and on my YouTube channel at RallyC.com. That's over W D Y and that's C dot com. That's a homepage to rally reviewer Chrisley Moore. And please check out all of his videos on his website. Thanks for watching, and catch you next time.